My name is Lakshmi Narayan. I am here on behalf of uh, Mr. Kaurav, ATMA. Uh, I'm, Kaurav is out of town, so I just wanted to introduce, give a brief introduce about our speaker here. Uh, his, his name is Mr. Basco Vijayanand. Uh, he's, he's done his MBA in international business, and he has a, a, over 10 years of experience in trading, uh, stocks, commodities, and currency market analysis. I call upon Mr. Vi uh, Basco Vijay to present his presentation about trading, up, trading as a business, business right? When we do a restaurant business, or we do a manufacturing business, or we do a brokerage business, or when we start those, you have a business plan. And if you don't stick to it, what's going to happen? Your revenue is not going to be hit, or your goal is not going to be met. Exactly the same way, we need to have trading also as a profession, and we need to act like professionals. So that's no different where we need to make our profits at the right time, minimize our losses at the right time. Can anyone spot the difference? Correct. Only monkey. Only monkey. Correct. So, <laughs> here, if you're looking at it, the major difference is the rope. The other one is the suicide. Correct? Most of them are first one or second one. The second one, invariably. Sometimes we are on this side. So all of it, what we need to understand is the choice is ours. Whether you do, is it the same person? <laughs> Probably the first time if he's doing it, second thing we'll not do it. <laughs> <laughs> so most of us we so this is one thing what we entertain or make people understand how they can make money in the market. What what does this particular picture make you understand? So risk is directly proportional to risk is directly proportional to risk is very small everybody risk is equal to reward risk as small as risk possible you need to take with better rate of return that's called as risk management this if you're looking at any fund management or any wealth manager or mutual fund uh, you know, a person who is handling mutual funds, they go with the concept of risk management. But a retail trader doesn't have a risk management in the dictionary at all. How many of us trade with stop loss? How many times a stop loss gets hit? Most of the time. Most of the time. So when the stop loss gets hit most of the time, what is the reason? Not putting it in the appropriate that is one a vague answer. But what exactly is, is your feeling when the stock is not up? See here, it's a right uh, time that you find that word judgment. Okay, Most of us, what we uh, put across is predict the market. No one can predict anything. All that we can do is anticipate. So a judgment cannot be made. Only an anticipation can be made in the market. This is where most of us, it's an ego clash, right? So when we say, or it gives us a, a thrill saying that, yeah, I know where the price is going to go. And invariably you see, it could have gone there, but keeping technicals in mind. But next time if you ask that person, the probabilities would have changed. So he or she cannot judge or predict. It's just anticipating. This is where we go back on our thought process. Because when we say something, that means that we are actually following it. When we say we predict the market, we always hold a ego. If something goes wrong, then you get hurt. So that eventually boils down on your profit margins. So always, please, please remember that market, only we need to do is anticipate. No prediction, no judgment. And this is where most of us fail in the longer run. Probably, yeah, once, twice we make profits, then the next consequent week or month or year, we will be on the downtrend. So like you rightly said, sir, in terms of the volume, it's always peak. Now, it's very, uh, what to say, a small point which actually is important because we always see the price is going up and stopping at a certain point, right? When the price or the market or valuation of a particular stock is coming down, okay, 
please hear this very clearly. When the price is hitting here and coming down, what are the reasons that the price is coming down? That is what I meant. Because our two important aspects, what we look at is, is it a downtrend before this formation? One. Second thing is, is there a support at this particular price? The reason why there is a spike. So whenever a spike happens, that means it's a preset orders which are there. So it's like it touches there because there are buy orders that is pushing the price up immediately. So whenever there is some preset price which is there, that is why the spike happens 99%. Otherwise the formation would be something like this, where the buyers, the transaction happens on a systematic way. So bearish engulfing is a reverse of bullish engulfing pattern where we look at a direction change and this primarily is more effective if the market changes direction after an uptrend. If this formation happens after an uptrend, that means 99% is going to reverse or come down. Do you guys have any questions? I know technical is very boring. So it's just that I want to make sure that uh, we have a more informative or uh, interactive session so that we understand because technical is something where the more we discuss and more we uh, have a clarity of the formation, it's easier for us to take decisions when we are alone. All the provisions, is volume also matter or not required to see the volume? See, volume matters, like I said, uh, volumes can be in terms of spike or a genuine volume to have a direction change. So the previous the volume uh, chart which we had, if you look at the candlestick formation when it actually broke out, so when volume uh, plays a contributing factor for a price breakout, that means technically and fundamentally it's giving you a green signal that the direction is going to go on one side. But whenever you see a volume spike happens and a candle formation is pretty much a doji or a big spike, that still is an indecisive because you don't know the reason for that particular spike. It can be a preset order or it can be some market related news or before the news release spikes happen because of uh, scalping. So these things are very important where we need to look at volume, candle formation and is there any fundamental news which is having an impact for that particular movement. So that is why initially when I asked how many of us follow only technicals how many of us follow only fundamentals and who combine both because when we know there is a news release this particular market will start reacting towards that or anticipating that particular price movement because as retail investors the news or the information we get there is a latency of that particular data so the data was received by the uh, big investment uh, bankers or institutions much before than what we get what this means is, that is, is there a fake breakout or is there a genuine movement in the market is where you will ask or look at the charts. Now if it says no, then you don't take a trade. Don't get worked up because no, I, I didn't get a chance to trade, I have to trade today. This is the biggest mistake that most of us do. If there is no opportunity, if there is no uh, thing, reason for you to trade, you shouldn't be in the market. Now if you're looking at it, if it says yes, has it printed on uh, a support or a resistance zone? Remember we seen in the previous chart slides, uh, zones are some something which will help you to take decision. So this also is a supporting point to that particular question. Now if it says yes, is a trade with the overall trend? This is a key question. Now support means does not necessarily have to be on a horizontal support or resistance. It can be on a channel also. So if it forms on the overall trend, which is on the upside, a support, then you go ahead with the trade. If it says no, is it the right trade set up a strong reversal pattern? Right? Sometimes what happens is, when the direction changes, the resistance can become a support and break out and go out. So that time, if the resistance is broken, you obviously wait for a direction change or a continuation. So instead of selling, you will wait for the price to break out and then buy or you put a buy stop. 
So these things is what will help you. Please have this in the chart so that you can have better decisions. Even if you're getting one rupee or two rupee a higher price, it's fine. But then you're rest assured that you will make money in that particular trade. Now these four points is what I thought would be helpful. This also can be a checklist for you guys to start before you take any trade. What type of a trend is it before the formation? Whether it is a downtrend, uptrend, or a sideways. What type of candlestick formation is it? Right? Like what we discussed, a, a, a bullish candle, a bearish candle, a doji, or it can be a, a spinning top. All these types is what you need to have a tick mark on that. Is there support or resistance at that point? If there is a support, if there is a resistance, you can blindly go ahead with the decision as per the formation, with the stop loss of course. And is there any news release? If you see invariably, what happens is, whenever there is a news release or just when the news release is going to happen, the price will hover around the support or resistance. You guys observe this in any, any market. It will hover around the support or resistance and invariably it will be a doji formation because people are just entering, exiting, entering, exiting to make that minimum profit. Once that new release happens, it will either pick up from the support or it will drop from the support if the news is in, in favor or against the particular currency, commodity or the stock. So that is why these four points which I put across, which is a simple checklist, which has helped most of them to take better decisions. Then you simple thing is go for the kill. Like we all know market pays you to be disciplined. So we'll have to be disciplined every day, every trade, and the market will reward you. So that's it from my end. I hope I haven't bored you guys. Yes? This one. So thanks for your time guys, so, uh, I hope I didn't bore you, so if it's more informative it might be nice for you guys to share that information with others. So we have arranged the refreshments outside, you can take, you can have it sir and you can come back and have a Q&A session. Thank you so much, Mr. Basco Vijay Anand. Thank you. Thanks everyone for spending time and sharing your experience. Uh, I would request humbly everyone to stand up and uh, for our national anthem.